my name is Haniel Kertour. I'm based out of Toronto, Canada. I work for Pativity, four times MVP. I've uh, been working with the Power Platform since its inception. Love doing it. Recently published a book a couple of years ago on Agile. Uh, if you know me and you're connected with me, great. Uh, if you want to connect with me, definitely reach out to me. If you don't want to connect to me, that's okay. I don't want to connect with you either ways. So today we're going to talk a little bit about multilingual. So what's, what's the general premise of my solution? And there's a few things. One of them is simple management. So terminology may change over time, right? So for example, a company may rebrand itself or um, certain aspects of, of what you have inside of your Power App, you want to you want to rename it. So rather than having to open up all of your Power Apps and, and change it, it would be nice to be able to do it centrally. Reducing development, right? If you work for an, a multilingual company, do you want to rebuild the same app again and again just in order to change the branding? The answer is no. Promote expandability. So again, as you start adding more languages, and I'll show this to you today, uh, ideally all you want to have to do is just add the language and that's it, nothing more required. Abstracting code from content. This is really, really important. So we've got our techies on the call. You guys are building the solution. Do you want to be bogged down with, hey, can you update this string? You know, I'd let you forget a character and I want to make a change. The answer is no. Ideally, Technology will build a solution and somebody like communications or marketing will actually own the content. They will own the text and you want to give them the ability to manage it. Uh, and also creating consistency. I've seen this many times where an organization is going to build multiple apps that seem very similar and then one, uh, one dialogue may say yes, no, and then another one which essentially does the same will say okay, cancel. So there's no consistency between the apps and using my approach will actually give you that ability. So I'm actually coming from the SharePoint world. And before I Power Platform ever existed, I was doing work in SharePoint. And SharePoint is very prevalent. Sorry for those who are Dynamics people or, or uh, Dataverse people, but the reality is that a lot of business people are very familiar with SharePoint today. So I figured let's use the, the SharePoint lists as the back end for, uh, for these languages. So the way it works is there's two types of lists. There's what I call string labels, and they're just single entities or single uh, single labels, and then there's list items. So imagine you have a, a, radio, bo a radio button, a drop down list, something that has multiple values in it. And so what happens is you build an app, you connect that to the lists, and then that will pull the data for you. If you build another app, it's going to go to the same list, and that's how you start creating the consistency, and so on and so forth. You're building more apps, and they all will connect to the same one. So if you had a very simple app that has a single uh, label and a drop down, the normal way that you would do it is you'd have a label and you give it the text parameter, which is, let's say, norm in French. And then if you want to have a color, you may have different list items or you pull it from some sort of a, a catalog or somewhere. What I do is I actually use the lookups and the lookups will go to my SharePoint list to pull information out and only give me what is relevant to me. Let me move over to the actual demo. So as I said before, I have two different lists. Come on. All right. So one of my lists is called my, actually I'm going to go with my strings labels first. And the only thing I need to identify in my list is what is my app name? And that allows me to do filtering so I don't have to load all of my labels into, into the app, only the ones I need. What is the name of the label? So that's an internal name I'm giving my label. And that's how I'm able to resolve it or give it some sort of a default value. What is the value that I want to display? And then what is the language? And that's really important. What you'll see here is that I'm only capturing two letters. Typically, when you look up a language, it has two letters for the language, a hyphen, and then two letters for the locale. So for example, I'm in Canada, so it's EN hyphen CA. In the US, it's EN hyphen US. Frankly, to me, English is English. I really don't care about the locale. So that's why I'm only looking at the language itself. The second list is the choice fields. Very similar. I have the app name. I have the control that I want to use. Then I have the individual labels, the language that I'm using, and I'm also adding a column for ordering. So it doesn't have to go alphabetic or whichever way I enter them to the list. I can actually define the order that I want. Let's look at all this magic happen. So I have my app right now. You can see the language says it's English. So when I go to my Microsoft 365 settings, 
you can see right now my English is my language display language is set to English. If I were to go in here, I'm going to change it to uh, Spanish. So I'm going to pick where is let's say Mexico. I'm going to select it. Okay, so now all of my user interface, everything will be in Spanish or should be in Spanish if I, if I refresh. There we go. So now if I go to my app, I'm going to refresh it and you'll see that it's going to change from EN to ES. Okay, so it picked up my language as Spanish from my Microsoft Face, from my settings. And now it gives me my English label, my English choice fields. I'm going to change it again. If you guys have any questions while I do this, feel free to ask. Let's make this a bit more interactive. So I'm actually going to go with a non Latin language. And I'm going to refresh it now again. And so I change it to Hebrew right now. And it's a Hebrew is a right to left language. It's picking it up. I could add a little bit more logic to say that is it a left to right language or a right to left language? And based on that, do I want to switch my label? So I could have done that. I didn't do it in this case. But as you can see, it's picking up the labels here. If I wanted to go and add another color, I'm going to go to my choices field and I have only one for Hebrew. So let me just go add another list item. So I'm going to go here. And I'm going to say my app is e your color. I can do whatever I want here. You will not know if it's true or not. And this is Hebrew. Hebrew. Okay. Just as simple as that. Notice how I didn't have to go and change the app. I didn't have to publish, do anything else. All I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to hit the refresh button on my screen. It's going to go and load the uh, the app and it's going to give me the extra value. So I have a question I bet you some people are thinking. I know the answer, but <laughs> I bet everybody would like to know it too. And I know you know it, but the question is, is you've demonstrated this in one web browser here. What about if you're running on a mobile device or a tablet Same. device or a different web browser than this one? No, it's, 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 oh wait. Um, so it's not picking it up from the browser. The, the language is not coming from the browser. The language is coming from the Microsoft 365 language setting. Right, so once you set it, so follow I you right around now, you go. Yeah, so wherever I go, as long as my setting in Microsoft 365 is the same, it's it's just gonna uh, it's basically just gonna pick it up on my phone. But if I have another five minutes, I can bring up my phone and show you. But trust me when I tell you that. It yeah. uses my Microsoft 365 settings. Doesn't matter if I'm using the mobile app or or whichever. And and the key is your trick. You're, you're triggering off your 365 setting there. It's not a browser specific setting that you're triggering on. That's right. So when you look at these, there is the Office 365 connector in the Power App. Once you use that connector inside of your Power App, there's an option for preferred language. And all I'm doing in my code literally is. I'm saying get me the preferred language, take the first two left letters, which represent the language, get rid of the rest. I don't care about the locale. That is the language that I'm then going to my SharePoint list and I'm filtering based on what is the app name, what is the control name, what is the language that I'm in right now. If it finds something, so I use the call lease function. If I find something, then I display the value. If I don't find something, I'm actually very careful of putting the default as the label name so that if I forgot to add something, I can actually go into my list and just add it. So if I go to my, my string labels, so you see, for example, I have welcome in English, Hebrew, Spanish, and I have another button. So I'm not going to quickly change this to German. So Deutsch. 
And I was thinking I would have Luis Fries here to correct me if I'm wrong. And so now if I refresh my screen. Are you doing any caching of the data? Or are you getting it each page going to the SharePoint site so each time you hit a page in the Power App? So it's not every page. It's on, on the load because typically you're not going to be changing labels every time you go to a page. It might change once a week, once a month. But the one thing that I have implemented here but I'm looking to do is the SharePoint list may have hundreds or thousands of labels. All I would do is I would do a single query to say, give me the single list item that has the most recent date. If it is newer than what's cached, that means that the labels have changed. Go load them and then put them into the cache. If it's older, just use everything from the cache and that would speed it up. Perfect. So you can see right here I have German. I don't have anything listed here. So instead of the question marks, I would normally put the label name. But now if I just go into my list here, I'm just going to say, OK, I'm going to add one more language. I'm going to say EWT. Welcome. Uh, hi, guys. This is Janev. I also have one question. Uh, yep. This is just a follow up question uh, 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 that we had previously. So, uh, there are scenarios where you know users. Uh, would prefer to have English language in the Office 365 settings, whereas they would like to change the browser language. OK, so I just wanted to understand how will this design work if we go and change the browser language to let's say Spanish or or any other language. So this okay. current design is based on your Office 365 settings. Okay. Um, right. For a couple of reasons, a to make it consistent across where you use the app because it can't know where it's going to be used. Like there was a question about different browsers. The second right. thing is, if you wanted to start using the browser, now you have to make certain API calls to to actually get the browser language, which you may have to start using like a, you know some sort of premium connection to do that. This is all running the, the the basic SharePoint connector, so there's nothing nothing special about it, and you're using the Office 365 connection to get the language. OK, OK, thanks. Okay, so yeah, if you're if you're using a mix of languages, it's mm -hmm. going to go this. This particular pattern is using whatever you have in your uh, Microsoft 365. OK, thank you. Uh, to finish it off. So I basically right now it was German. Imagine I was a marketing person. I went in and I said, hey, we just purchased a company in Germany. Let's add support for them into the into the app. Great. You just all you have to do is go get the labels and tell you know tell whoever is using the app. You can now start loading it in German, and then the information is going to appear for you. You can also use, for example, if you didn't want to just have a placeholder, you can say English is going to be the default if something is not found. That's pretty much it. Any questions? Um, sorry, there was an unknown user. Any reason not to use Excel? So yeah, so the reason that I you can use Excel, it definitely works. But every time the language changes, you have to go, you have to open up the app, you have to publish the app, do that, right? So that puts an onus on IT to do that. That's that's really the the uh, the big reason of why I, I may choose to not use Excel. Can we see the code? Um, how are we doing on time? Is it okay if we take another couple of minutes to show the code? I think if you could just show maybe one of how you, how you pulled it for the uh, on start and then how you applied that, maybe the uh, welcome label you had, that would probably be yep. good. Yeah, that's pretty quick. So I don't know if it's just me, but it seems very slow today, the service, or it's just the fact that I'm doing a demo that it's slow. That's always it's how it works, isn't straight. it? Never fails. <laughs> so overall, this pattern is, is very simple though, right? You just need to add a data connection to your SharePoint lists and then call that connection in your startup, which I'm sure you're about to show us. Yeah. Get the data back and then apply it to the labels appropriately, right? That's that's literally all it is. Yeah. Yeah. So and again, I mean the the um, it, it's not like a huge wow, you know, really complex architecture. But it really, the, to me and to my, to when, I've, when I've done this for some clients, the biggest problem that solved was it was removing the onus of IT having to deal with all those little minutia, you know, marketing. Hey, can you change this? Oh, can you change that? If yeah. anybody on the on the mark on the call who's marketing, I apologize. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the other marketing people. 
So if I go to the on start, so the first thing I'm doing is I'm I'm picking up a, a you can see right here, Office 365. I'm getting my profile, and I said I'm getting the left two characters from the preferred language. If it's blank, I'm I'm setting it to uh, to en, and I'm assigning it to my uh, uh, to a variable called language, a um, a global variable. And then I'm just loading my collections from the two SharePoint lists. So that's what's happening on start. So Todd, there's no reason to have to do this on every page. I do it one time when I load the app. Mm -hmm. And then if I go to the specific label, so if I go to... And can I can I ask you a question real quick? Yeah, of course. It, it seems this is Chad Althaus. I, I was just thinking the question about changing the language, you could render a uh, unique set of all the languages as an option set to choose from and then set the, that local variable from that, huh? If you want to allow. Yeah, I, could, I could cache, I could cache yeah. the, the, yes, absolutely. I could cache the variable. Again, for me, it was in Canada, we were bilingual English, French. And at the time, the client said, you know, we want to base it off of the service because they're going to be running in English or in French. Like that's how they're working here. So this was built for a specific use case. Changing a different language based on like a, a selector, absolutely you can do that. Nothing stopping you from doing that. So this is this is kind of the, the sausage making. So uh, anytime I have a label, right? So I'm doing a lookup against the string collection, and I'm saying find me a match where the title is equal to the name of my app, the label is equal to the name of the label, the language is equal to whatever I've to, I've ret I'm returning. And then if the, you know, I'm using the colli, so basically if it returns nothing, I'm just going to display the, the label LBL welcome. Fantastic. One line of code. And like then, we always see in the Power Platform. <laughs> yeah. And then the rest is, is uh, for, for a uh, collection or a list, I'm just using a filter where I'm filtering again on the app name, the control, and then the language. And then I could, I think the sort order is where I am. Um, uh, where is it? Awesome. Oh, well, I don't have it here, but um, but yeah, the sort order is just the other column. Anyways, that's it in a nutshell. Thank you. Great demo. Thank you. I'm sure a lot of people will be going out to build one of those very shortly here. Next time you got something cool to show, let me know and come on back. I'm sure everybody would love to see such a nice demo. Will do. Thanks. Mm -hmm.